So connect your remote process. What will be the URL will be something like this. Sorry, okay. Uh, remote process. Uh, 7199, that's the default one. So you connect, insecure is fine, you don't really want an SSL based system. So this is the way you actually can uh, use something called Java console or J console which is available inside your, uh, the JVM provides you as a tool which you could connect and this helps you in, in actually accessing any of your JMX based features. So it gives you all the information like the, your current heap memory usage of your of the process, what is the number of threads that are there, the live threads, how many classes are loaded, what is the CPU usage. So it provides the capabilities to monitor all the stuff. So similarly you can see each of them if you want to really look at uh, the memory alone, what is the heap memory usage, how it is, what is the current situation of that, if it's something which is really overboard or anything of that sort you can monitor from here. Similarly you have uh, threads, what is the number of live threads that are running. You can take it for per different specific uh, uh, red threads and you can understand what is the stack trace of each of them etc. So you can see what they are doing right now and what are the number of live threads and what is the peak of it if in case it's, re it's reached the peak and etc. So you can use this to monitor it. Similarly you have class loaders showing what is the number of classes that are loaded. VM summary basically what is the different types of arguments. What are the various arguments that you have used. What is the minimum and maximum memory that you have actually allocated for your JVM uh, for this particular application. So all those things you could actually monitor here and so that is from the general information that you can monitor. Now coming back to M means or basically the JMX means. So Cassandra provides you some default M means out of the box. If you look at it here, or Apache Cassandra DB. So it talks about all the different types of uh, information that's available, endpoint snitch information. You have attributes, snitch names, and you have operations. So basically, you can you can use the operations actually you can run from here itself directly. So if you want to get information, you can actually run them directly here. Similarly, you have uh, for each stage, uh, this gossip stage has some attributes which talks about what is the total number of block tasks, currently block tasks, all the different information that you can actually get from here, pending tasks, completed tasks, active count if you see, right? So it, it gives you all the information which is here and you can refresh etc. So to get the data for yourself. So that way it provides you a lot of embeds which you can use and uh, similarly, you can basically run uh, run something like this also. Say, okay, you you can you can actually run operations this way. Some of them have operations, so you can say operations, and then it it will actually give you multiple operations that it supports, and then you can run the operation from here. Something like that. So you click on it, and then you can run the operation and obtain the information. Associated with the total compact, compactions completed. Okay. If I just say what is the number of things that are completed, it runs that and gives you the information. But right now, there's nothing that's running on the box. So it doesn't show you anything, but uh, you can actually use these things to get all the information. See, so even types, the number of count is so and so. Uh, what is the rate at which it runs? So all the information are available inside these mbeans. So you can use these mbeans to actually get a lot of information associated with your Cassandra. You can even start stop compactions if required from here as an on demand. So it gives you a lot of parameters, information about the different things that actually are running inside the system. What is the core pool size? What is the core number of threads? What is the maximum threads that are uh, that is configured? And what is that you want to really, if you want to do, uh, you have to change, this, this is basically a monitoring thing, right? So you are not really doing a management here. So it is helping you to monitor only for some set of operations are provided which can, which allow you to do some management. Like for example, as I said, compaction you could run 
you could run compaction from here. Uh, uh, where can I? Yeah, here. So I can say force force user defined compaction. Actually, say say it will go and uh, okay. Now it's not happening, but okay. I need to give some data here, the column family and etc. Information, and then you can run uh, the compaction there. So give this information, and then you can run directly. So like this, you have uh, different types of operations which are supported, which you can run on Cassandra uh, using these mbeans. And some of the other things are just to monitor what is the current state of Cassandra. This is the general service, etc. The hits, hit, hits, hits, attributes, number of hits that is happening, hit rate, requests, number of requests made. So all these things are actually available for you to monitor, and some of them are available as operations which you can run. Using the J console. How can we add these Cassandra plugins and MBs? No, these are already there. These are already defined out of the box MBs. MBs are actually defined for you in the inside the application, right? Say for, for example, I'll show you how does it work. Okay, we close this. I'll show you a diagram which helps you to understand. Okay, this is the way it works in the Java MBs MB server. So the mechanism is you have a, a Java application and you provide hooks inside your application which uh, you use to create your uh, Java MBs. So these MBs are actually the hooks which are provided inside your application. Now you can connect to these MBs through the MB server and then you can obtain information about the various hooks like it's like it's a probe. So you put a probe inside your application to obtain information about the application in more detail. That's exactly what an MBN is. So when you create an MBN and you provide a JMX based interface, you are actually creating a probe inside your application at various stages. And with the help of the probe, you get the, all the information that you need. And then the MBN, sir, you as a Java JMX management application, like just uh, we saw just now, right? The J console. So use J console to actually connect to the MBN server which will expose all these MBs for you to operate, manage, and monitor. Make sense, Disha? So these are already available. So you don't need to add any specialized uh, plugins in MBs. But if you want to write your own MBs, then you basically have to write uh, another JMX hook into the Cassandra application and build that code just as you do with any other Java application. So if I want to write JMX extensions to my Java application, I can actually write the JMX interface, implement the MBean, and register that MBean with the MBean server. Right? And then it's available after that for you for your uh, JMX client application to work with it. Okay? So yeah, so it, it helps you basically to understand the application health, overall performance, etc. On all the resources, it allows you to work with specific aspects of the application that you have instrumented. So your instrumentation is with respect to the application. Okay, cool. So that's the JMX part of it.